Welcome back into the Enrichment Sports Source, our 10th annual Christmas Spectacular. Uh, this segment brought to you by Fast Frame and the folks at Fast Frame. want to wish everyone out there a Merry Christmas. And if you get a photo or a piece of art this Christmas, not happy with the frame, be sure to take it to Fast Frame. Uh, I can tell you they are absolute professionals and they can protect it and enhance it with a beautiful frame and perfect museum quality glass. They do fantastic work all year long. Fast Frame. All right, back with Chuck, Mike, Bob, and Jimmy. Three quick questions in here. Anybody can take them and, and run with them. All right. I'm going to have a little musical <laughs> turn at this point. Okay. Here we go. Here's the first one. Sorry, on Sterling Hinton up there. This fall, Tennessee did what a lot of schools are now doing, and that's cut back on the band time to add a DJ and some rah-rah music to football games. Recruits and players loved it. Some fans and the band did not. Should UT repeat the sounding joy? Repeat the sounding joy, <laughs> or should they nix our pal Sterling and give the band more time? I'm going to take stick, Sterling I'll, out of it. Yeah. I'll, I'll take Sterling out of it, but I'll still stick with what Sterling does. I just think it's a more fun atmosphere now. I mean, I'm sitting over there in the stands um, on a bench seat that UT's allowed to be slanted now for five consecutive years, <laughs> and and I just I, I think that stuff in the jumbotron, I think it makes it more fun. You, you said the key thing to me, John, when you said rec recruits loved it. And to me, it, it is a, a livelier atmosphere. And obviously, you still need the band, and the band does a great job. But I think you've got to also realize how in entertaining and enjoyable this is. Well, uh, I know that Sterling gets pregame uh, requests from the players. So that stuff you're in pregame that they're getting fired up to, that's their request. And remember so. the time on ESPN? They weren't showing the band. They were showing Sterl the Pearl. Right. There's always a place for the band, and always will be, and that's all fine and good. But I, I'm, I'm with, I go with the DJ and the stuff for the yeah. for the younger crowd. I, I don't know how the, where the balancing act is because the band <laughs> felt like they got cut out a lot. But I think this: if you're doing something that appeals to recruits, and the whole idea is to have a better football team, then I would continue to do those things that appeal to recruits. Okay. Well, I mean, it's also just fun, and I mean, it's almost like, at night. It's almost like a laser light show going on with all the different stuff happening. All right, here's our next one for everybody. What will Tennessee coach Butch Jones have to do to get the majority of Vol fans to say, oh, come let us adore him? <laughs> what will it take to make Vol fans adore Butch Jones? What's he got to do? Be relevant, competing for an SEC title. Okay. Nobody's going to be really on board until he challenges for a title. All right. Uh, I think one thing that would really help would be beat Florida. Okay. Beat Florida. Uh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with Mike. I think be relevant at the end of the season. I mean, don't get into November – then the best thing you're doing is playing for a mediocre bowl game. If yes. you get into November and you're still in the title mix in the East, I think that'll make people happy. Yeah, challenges for the East, which is the same thing. That yeah. means you're yeah. relevant in November. So, Which means no one's going to truly adore him next year because there's no way they're going to. It would be a massive Doesn't. shock if they compete right. for the East next year. I would agree with yeah. that. But they could beat Florida next year. Or maybe win at Georgia. I mean, do, they do something like that, yeah. Okay. Beat well, South Carolina. They beat South Carolina. Yeah. Nobody adored him. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. People did Some at that did. time. And yeah. then they passed on it. All right. Uh, the la last one in this segment right here. In the song Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, Sinatra's version is best, by the way, it said, from now on, your troubles will be miles away. Which of UT's big three men's programs is closest to fitting that line? Which, cl which program, wow. football, basketball, or baseball, is closer to putting its troubles out of sight? I'll start off with football just because it, I know it's, football is the hardest one yeah. to read, but, but the recruiting is going so well in football, whereas in basketball, you look at the roster and who's coming in, and it doesn't look as promising next year as football does to me. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You thought basketball because, you, you know, you thought that would be the one, especially this year with the seniors, but football, especially what, the way recruiting is going. Quickly, football, uh, basketball, or baseball? I'm going to go football, too, because I think baseball – you know, it's still it's still early on in Serrano's tenure, but I think people are already getting upset about that because three years now you should have everything yeah. turned around. And that's a sport most no offense. That's a sport most folks don't care about unless they're losing. Just so you can go to the comment boxes. They want them to win. If they're big, winning. It's yeah. or if they lose bigs when they get yeah. paid attention. To well, I'm I'm going to say baseball because I think they're going to be better quicker. Okay. If that's what you're looking yeah. for, yeah. so I I think it's going to be baseball. All right, they are the closest to putting their troubles miles away. When we come back, SEC turkeys, gray uniforms, and stopping Nick Saban. Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Source. <laughs>